This is my high school sketchbook. And this is my favorite painting I've ever done. No, this is. No, this is. And this is Jess Paul. <laughs> Last week, we spun on art and Etsy. And this is a category that I wanted to both talk about being an artist and how to sell your art. I'm an amateur in a lot of things and an amateur not being a dirty word, but meaning that I'm not professionally trained in some things like filmmaking, acting, makeup, a lot of the things that I'm going to be talking about in this series. At heart, I'm really a DIYer, but one of the only things that I can actually claim to be a professional at, I went to school, I paid a lot of money to learn, was art. I always joke, but really, it's probably going to happen. Then I'm going to walk up to receive my Oscar and I'm going to say, thank you, mom and dad, who let me go to art school. And then when I came back and said, hey guys, I think I want to be an actor now, you guys still supported me. <laughs> but today I wanted to talk to those people who have always had an interest in drawing, being an illustrator, but we're always very discouraged. I did have a lot of encouragement to just keep doing it, and that's really the key on how you get better. There's barely anyone who opens up a sketchbook or even takes a piece of like computer paper for the very first time, takes a pencil, and just draws a masterpiece. Kids, adults, teenagers, you start out and you start out being plain and bad and you just need to keep doing it in order to, to get better and that's exactly what I'm going to prove to you today. I was that average kid that when all the other kids were drawing, I was drawing as well. Um, I had a special interest in it, but really I was no better than anyone else. I might have thought I was, but... Let's be serious. And as I went through school, like higher elementary school and middle school, I kind of lost my interest in drawing until I got to my, I want to say sophomore year art class and I really picked it up again. Um, we all got these exact sketchbooks. I had to tape mine because I just destroyed the spine, but we were encouraged to draw on it all the time and just be practicing on our own. I do have some more story times that include this sketchbook, but <laughs> we'll wait till the wheel spins on it. But I did carry this thing around with me and I really took it to heart to draw in it all the time. So if you are here to learn how to become an amazing artist really quickly, Stay tuned. I'll be getting to my master tips in a couple minutes. But first, I wanted to give you a very personal tour of how one person, me, starts at sucking and eventually becomes a decent illustrator. So I didn't date every single picture that I ever drew, but I do have this sticky note in here that says that it starts in 2005. So when I was 15 years old, I would have started this. And this is the first drawing in the sketch. This sketchbook is literally falling apart. It says bright eyes. There was a guy that I liked in that class and he asked me, oh, do you mean like bright eyes the band? And I'm like, no, this is Daniel Radcliffe. He has bright blue eyes. Such an idiot. Should have just said yes. As you can see, he's got very vague, misproportioned angular features. Um, the angle wasn't too bad, but I had really um, messy, sloppy shading, not a lot of detail in hair, eyes, mouth. Um, it's very kind of beginner. But at the time I did, I'm like, this is great. This is what I can do. This is fine. Like I really didn't have a sense of beating myself up about something. Now I do more, more than ever, but like this was like what I could do and this is what I was okay with. And I was okay with continuing to draw and just eventually, like, over time I got better. So, I drew on opposite pages. I do not recommend doing that because, especially if you're drawing in pencil or charcoal, anything that can transfer, you're going to get um, a lot of the transfer onto the other drawing, which is not good. I did do a pretty good mix of objects and spaces versus portraits. Obviously there's tons of faces in here. I even named these things. I see titles like it's called The End and this one's called Room. Didn't date them, but I named them like vague philosophical <laughs> cliched names. This was a really great thing that I did. I literally did over a dozen faces. So that meant that I was you know, really rushing the process of looking at different angles, different kinds of features. This isn't one of the tips because I'm going to get to the tips later, but if you do want to accelerate your portrait um, expertise, draw multiple faces in one piece. Um, 
there are going to be a couple references to Rob Thomas's previous band. Uh, what was it called? Tabitha's Secret. I think this was in the album cover. A lot of it though, I did draw from photographs. A lot of artists or teachers that will give advice will say, you know, it's better to draw from real life. I honestly believe that it's better to just practice both. Both of those things will teach you two different skills. I think when you draw from a photograph, you are picking out individual geometric shapes to make the whole um, from the stagnant photograph that you are doing. And then when you draw from real life, that's a whole separate set of skills because when you draw from real life, you have to factor in the 3D-ness. When you have a photograph, it's already two-dimensional. You can pick out those exact shapes that aren't going to be changing. But when you are drawing from 3D, you have to capture light and space in a way that can move if you literally just, you know, move your body. This is a piece that is of Rob Thomas. Again, I, I used to love Matchbox 20 so much, but I've drawn this, this picture of him, this photo of him, um, three different times. Something that I saw that other artists were doing on like DeviantArt, they would draw the same exact thing uh, separate years of their lives to show their progress. That's a very cool thing to do. Um, if you want to see how long you've progressed after a year, half a year, five years, it's very cool to take the same photograph or the same object, draw it again, and see how much all of the aspects of your of your skill has improved. But this was something I was trying to do. I was trying to create more of a comic book style, more angular, more harsh lines. Ah, here is the second version of that Rob Thomas picture. This is definitely a lot more honed in. You can see a lot more detail in his eyes and his hair. Um, a, a much better understanding of, of white and blacks. Yeah, see, we're actually like getting to be a lot more detailed as these pictures go on. So these are uh, more portraits. I after at this point, I started um, I started drawing Tyson Ritter from the band All American Rejects because he was my next crush. I actually like this one. So as a lot of people do when they are going along with portraiture, there's a couple things that they normally focus on. Eyes is a huge one. You have probably seen a million like really detailed drawings of eyes, just one eye. The nose is very unrealistic. Um, not the, the bottom's pretty good, but this, nobody has a nose like that. The lips are a little less detailed, but I was focusing on just a face, didn't care about a head, just wanted to do the features. Um, pretty unproportional, but for a surreal picture, it's kind of cute. Okay, so we're at 11.06. So this is now like late fall, a year after I claimed that I started drawing in this. I did some surrealist stuff, like I, I experimented with both realism and surrealism because, I mean, why not? This was just like anything I wanted to do in this sketchbook. Another thing that I realized that I did with this sketchbook that is very different from other sketchbooks, when you have a sketchbook, there can be a lot of unfinished experimental pages where all you're doing is you might you might just perfect a nose over and over again. You might just be kind of scribbling and sketching things that you see. They're not even complete pictures. I chose to do kind of complete pictures, even though they weren't great. I chose to fill the whole page with a room. Or I drew a whole person from, from line work to shading completely. That was just my choice, and you could do it either way. If you want to spend the pages of your sketchbook, just, um, like I said, just like practicing ears or just practicing shading techniques. That is completely fine. When you have a sketchbook, it's all about what you want to practice, what you want to express. If you're drawing birds in the park, but you don't actually like drawing birds in the park, that's just what you think you're supposed to be doing, you're not going to continue to do it. You're not going to like it and you're going to lose your passion. So please, Draw celebrities that you love. Draw anime characters if you're interested in that. Do the style, do the the content that you like, and you'll just keep getting better at that, and that's just how that goes. The next page is what I like to make for the big comparison when I talk about showing my sketchbook to other people. Let's rem remember that this is kind of the where we started. So this would be about one year later that I'm going to be showing you this next portrait. I told you I was obsessed with Pirates of the Caribbean, 
and this portrait is one that everybody loves. So, I mean, I have my own criticism about it. I don't think it's perfect, but a lot of people love it. And it's one of the things that I say, you can draw like this if you just keep doing it. So this was an attempt at charcoal. We learned charcoal in class. And this is one of the ways that I express my practice with the charcoal. I can see a little bit of bad proportion, a little, a little bit of dissymmetry, but overall it's a pretty impactful uh, piece. This is a crowd favorite and it's one of the ways that I like to say, hey, if you think that this is so cool and you want to be an artist and you think that you can never get to this, just remember that nobody starts out like drawing like this. So now that you have a little idea on my drawing history, I'm going to give you three tips on how to really excel at drawing. But before I get there, let's break down the basics of drawing. Especially when you are looking at somebody in real life or even looking at a photograph, you are trying to break down the pieces and understand the space relation of the objects in the pictures, the symmetry and proportion of the objects that you're drawing, and how to break down an object, a person, a scene into smaller pieces in order to piece a picture together. One of the greatest tricks my grandma ever taught me was to use mirrors when you draw. This sounds kind of strange, but especially when you're drawing portraits, you can be looking at a person's face for a very long time, your own drawing, and sometimes your brain corrects a dissymmetry or a space relation that you're not seeing because you've literally just been staring at a picture for hours. When you use mirrors, when you draw, meaning you take your drawing, you hold it up in a mirror and you look into a mirror, it gives you a brand new perspective. You might hear some people that claim they're not really good at drawing, but they're really good at figuring out what's wrong with somebody else's drawing. That's because they're seeing something with fresh eyes. You can call your friend over or your mom or your brother or your sister and you say, hey, what should I fix on this? And they sometimes can give you an answer that you didn't see before. It works the opposite way too, like when you look in a mirror and put on your winged eyeliner or cut your own bangs and then you go to a party and you see a picture of yourself and you're like, Shh, who let me leave the house like that? Oh, the selfies are mirrored too. Cute though. But when you have an immediate change in perspective, even with your own eyes, it is very helpful to see if your proportions are correct, if your space relation is correct, and if your symmetry is correct, especially on portraiture. I even keep a mirror right beside my head at my desk so that I can, one, look right into the mirror into my computer screen to see if what I'm digitally illustrating or if I need to make a face or a hand gesture in a mirror to understand what that looks like. I can just turn beside me and I can do it. Another way to change a perspective in this similar way is to turn your drawing upside down every once in a while or sideways. If it's a person, if it's an object that's recognizable, you can see if there are any problems with it, even if it's upside down. My number two tip might be a controversial one, but it is to trace photographs. Like I said, when you're learning to draw an object that you see in real life or in a picture, you have to break it into geometrical shapes. My best example is when you hold your hand out like this. You're no longer drawing the hand that you knew how to draw in elementary school, the five fingers. You're, you're drawing something different now. You're drawing this triangle shape and you're drawing the fingers as individual objects with some dimension in between. And sometimes if you're really not getting it, if you're not seeing the shapes yourself, I recommend that as you practice, you take a photograph and you just trace it. Because you're vaguely seeing a picture through a piece of paper, you're able to more accurately discern the dark spaces, the light spaces, the shapes that make up an object. I do not encourage you to sell the pieces you are tracing or to lie to people and tell them that you're not tracing. You can explain to people that this was how I learned, this was during my practice, and it was really helpful in order for me to understand the pieces that make up an entire object. And my third and final tip is to draw every day or as frequently as possible. I did spend a lot of time after school just drawing, even in class sometimes, which was a detriment to my math class, just because I loved it so much. If you're having trouble staying motivated to draw, you kind of want to second guess yourself is this something I really love doing? Is this something I really want to focus my time on to become a better artist? If you're not, maybe you should just move on to something else that you're actually interested in. But if you find that you just love doing it every day, just know from my own experience that 
the more that you draw, the better you become. I hope that you're enjoying all these different categories and videos. If this is like the second or third or fourth video you've watched of mine and you're not subscribed yet, you might kind of want to second guess why you're not subscribed. One of my biggest pet peeves is when a YouTuber asks you to subscribe before the video even really starts. It's like, bitch, you don't even know if I like this content yet. But if you've seen a couple videos, you want to see more? That's what that red button's for. We gotta spin the wheel! I seriously have like slight anxiety slash excitement every time we do this. Even though I've, I've come up with ideas for literally every single one of these uh, categories, it's still like, what, what do I have to do literally like next week? And why do I get more excited for one or the other? I ha- I- I ha- I put- I- I created the wheel. Hmm. I know what I'm gonna do. So, this week when I actually figure out what category I want to pick, I will post on social media a poll of exactly what you want out of that category and you guys can interact with me. Um, I'm going to do that on Facebook. So if you are not on my Facebook page, it exists. You can go down into the links of this YouTube video and you can go take the poll very soon. Maybe I'll even think of it before I post this video. Well, that would make sense so that you can go and vote. Okay. So it's like we're figuring this out as we go along. But I'll talk to you guys throughout the week, and I will be seeing you with my face next week. So, have a good one. So last week we had spun the wheel for the very first time ever, and it landed on audience choice. Unsurprisingly, I got a lot of votes for Rex.